Welcome, Lucy and Tomas. To start things off, can you tell us what inspired each of you to pursue a career in research and conservation? Um, it's, you know, conservation was kind of in my family. My father's an ornithologist who studies birds and wrote uh, bird field guides. And so I spent my childhood outdoors exploring nature and just always knew that I wanted to work with animals. And as I got older and realized, um, you know, that some things were endangered um, or threatened with extinction, I, I realized that was what I wanted to work on. I always wanted to work with animals that were at risk of in, in extinction because obviously uh, time is of the essence and, you know, we, we feel like we can do something Im impactful to conserve them. So um, when I, I, I started out working with uh, coyotes actually, but I transitioned to marine animals and um, have generally worked with the animals that were in need of conservation most of my career. In the opposite to Lucy, conservation was not in my DNA. And I just was interested about collecting animals, different, mostly pets and other animals too. And I remember literally my father telling me in my childhood, he's not gonna let me turn his house into a zoo. And um, I have to say always, I was not born conservationist. I become conservationist because uh, I was interested on uh, animals, different type of animals, and including turtle. And when I realized the animals I like so much was in peril, I wanted to get involved in finding the way to protect them. This is what led me to conservation. This is an evolution in my, in my love with animals who lead me to conservation. Uh, I have to say, uh, I was inspired in the first, first of all, what, we, uh, what I noticed is in the part of the continent I belong, conservation was not really something easy in the beginning. Well, now also is not easy at all uh, because just uh, people, uh, most conservation effort in Africa, Africa is such a big continent and most effort, conservation effort was focused mostly in the megafauna in Eastern and Southern Africa. West Africa was just a no man's land for a while for any conservation effort, particularly for turtle, tortoise, and uh, sea turtle and all these things. But fortunately, in my generation, people like, uh, I was inspired by uh, American biologists like uh, Peter Pritchard, Anders Rodin, and a French biologist named Bernard de Vaux who was uh, just uh, doing something meaningful to protect turtle uh, to the area of the world where they belong, uh, like in France and uh, US and other country too. And always I was watching, you know, reading article about them and uh, watching movie who highlight conservation. And I wanted to, this is the way I projected myself in the future to become one of these people just for West uh, Africa, lead conservation of turtle and tortoise in Africa. This is step by step how I evolved in understanding I cannot in my lifetime, I cannot impact all the conservation uh, uh, field I wanted to impact because I'm interested in also on different other species, uh, but turtle is my focus, really. Turtle is just something who make me happy, who make me really wanna do so much. And uh, I'm happy to have tw now 25 years of conservation uh, experience. And now the next step will be to inspire new generation. We, we started now to get Senegalese and African involved in this process. It's gonna be a really long process. I know that, but somehow along the way, somebody need to put the seed in the ground. And we consider ourselves like uh, to be in that position. Thank you. So thank you so much for the work that you're doing. It's, it's very important. Um, what are the most rewarding aspects of your work or what gives you hope, Lucy Antifas? Well, lots of things give me hope. Um, so I think 
for me, the training that I'm doing for people from other countries and seeing them start their own manatee programs in other African countries and some of them that are really getting off the ground and being quite successful and feeling like there's a legacy beyond my work um, is really meaningful to me. You know, I started this just as one person by myself in Gabon trying to find manatees and realized really quickly that, you know, there's 21 countries where this species occurs and I can't do all this by myself. And so I started training people and, um, you know, that was 14 years ago and, and it's built to the point where we I have graduate students and um, I just finished hosting the first African Manti Symposium last week, which had 80 attendees from 17 countries and we had 34 talks and it was way beyond what I ever thought, you know, I could accomplish. So it makes me really happy to see that for the future um, and know that other people are really dedicated to African manatee work. And that there was so much energy and enthusiasm from the participants and, you know, wanting to do more and wanting to collaborate with each other and planning. And um, so, so that was, that was great. I mean, for me, that's, that's really wonderful. Yeah, for me, I have different, because when you, in the term of, well, I'm happy, to be able like uh, in different project to have uh, particularly for the project we have in uh, Northern Senegal for freshwater turtle, being able each year to release uh, the hard sorted specimen back to the wild with a strong component of, because we, in that moment is just a sea, uh, um, sorry, a turtle release day. With five villages, we come together like a turtle day. Uh, women make a really nice meal. And uh, in the beginning of the day, we have a talk, uh, a welcoming talk from different chief of village. And after that, with the kids, we go together, release the turtle, come back, have lunch, uh, people, gardeners, and all these things. And this just, you associate conservation to something really fun with villagers. And I have to say, this year we was not able to do that. Uh, this journey usually is uh, uh, in um, January. We was not able to do that, but we, we did that for three years in a row. Yeah. And I was just so, and each year was, we gather more people and people were just so happy. We have t-shirt, we print t-shirt at the hand and all these things. And people was traveling from Dakar to go to see, to attend to this event. And it started to become really something. A festival. A festival. And also what I realized is the festival now is even if the kids at the village, different village we are working with around the protected area. If I didn't organize the festival, they say, oh, why you don't organize? I say, this year the turtle don't lay the eggs and I don't have hatchling. I need hatchling in order to release that and make it more fun. And they say, oh yeah. But they, these young kids, their parents don't know any of what we are doing now, like conserving animals, like releasing animals, be able to give this kind of uh, incentive or um, uh, experience. experience to these kids. And they can have it in their memory because it's important to imprint in the memory of the kids you want tomorrow to be conservation or maybe help conservation to have this kind of uh, exposure in their childhood. If, if in their childhood they don't have this kind of exposure, never is they, they are gonna do something meaningful for conservation. And this year, uh, now we are go gonna just little by little, uh, we, 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 we are gonna organize, be able to organize the African scholarship program. It's gonna happen somewhere in November. And African scholarship program is gonna gather in West Africa, wide, wildlife, uh, conservationists, uh, young students, and different type of people in some kind of training program here in Senegal 
where people can um, be trained on conservation technique, but also be able to go to the field and see what looks like a conservation program, a long-term conservation program. You cannot just expect to come to the village, to the community, and they are gonna say, okay, everything is nice. We are gonna, we are, oh, we was eating the turtle and now we are, we stop. No, they are gonna always, you, you have plenty of bad days and they need to understand that. And you need to just being perseverant on what you want. And these people need to understand, I'm not gonna uh, do this training saying to them, everything will be nice when you come back to your country, you are gonna, everybody is gonna welcome you and say you get trained and everything is gonna go like smoothly. No, that is not reality. You need to understand <laughs> before you get to that level, this is uh, what we went through and all these things. I don't wanna scare them away, of course, but I need to tell them the reality of conservation. That's terrific, Tomas. And it's great to hear about, um, you know, not only the important work you're doing for turtles, but also um, training the next generation, which is how, you know, conservation will, will truly have a lasting impact. Thank you for joining us today, Lucy and Tomas, and for inspiring us with the work you are doing for African wildlife. For our audience, here's information on how you can follow the work of Lucy and Tomas and their organizations. Before we go, I also want to say a thank you to the MCAF fellows for their contributions to the Blue Planet Science Series and to all of our supporters and colleagues who make the MCAF program possible. Thanks for joining us.